Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to another Logic Pro 11 tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build your own custom drum machine designer kits by using the drag and drop samples feature and loading up an empty uh, drum kit or an empty drum machine. So you can build your own custom kit out of your own samples. Maybe you subscribe to a sample library service like I do, uh, Splice is what I use, but you don't have to use Splice. These could be samples you made yourself. These could be samples you've gotten elsewhere on the internet. Uh, but the whole point here is that you can build your own custom drum kits and you don't have to rely so much on the stock kits uh, that are included in Logic Pro. Now, this is a topic a lot of people have asked about. And although I have covered this in other videos, in those other videos, you pretty much have to like dig through another tutorial, like a full DMD or a full step sequencer tutorial to find that information. So I figured I'd do a shorter separate video just on this topic alone. Now, before I get started, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox.io is the ultimate promotional and collaboration tool for musicians, musical artists, bands, producers and mix engineers. With Boombox, you can upload your files. You can upload audio files, stems, multi-tracks, and even full DAW sessions. You can then share your projects with your collaborators who can leave time-stamped feedback on your tracks. And you can also create your own custom inbox with a private web address that you can share with your clients and collaborators so that they can send you their DAW projects, audio files, whatever it is you're working on. And as a promotional tool, Boombox allows you to create your own custom artist page to get your music out to the world. The new Boombot AI features allow you to generate MIDI chord progressions and other MIDI ideas. It can help you with writing lyrics. And if you don't have Apple Silicon and can't tap into the stem splitter in Logic Pro 11, Boombot AI has its own stem splitter and vocal remover. If you're ready to give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io today and get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so I've got a blank project pulled up here. I just need to create a new track. Now, by default, if you select a pattern track, and we're gonna go with the software instrument, the instrument down here will probably say default patch. That's gonna load up one of the default patches from Logic's sound library. We don't want that. We wanna load up an empty channel strip, and I'm not going to open the library, except it's already open, so it's no big deal. We'll click create. I'll go ahead and hide the library. Okay, so what I can do now is I can load up Drum Machine Designer on this track manually. So I'll just click on Instrument here. I'll select Drum Machine Designer, and it will pull up the Drum Machine Designer instrument. Now, the way Drum Machine Designer works is it works more like a, a like a collection of instruments, not just one single instrument, because each pad in Drum Machine Designer can access either a, a drum synth instrument or a quick sampler instrument. For dragging and dropping samples in, we're gonna be using the quick sampler instrument. So think of it as a collection of instruments all packed into a track stack. So I'm not gonna load up any of these presets. I'm just gonna go with the empty kit. And what we can do is we can start dragging and dropping in our own samples. I'm a huge fan of using Splice. However, you can use any sample service you like. Um, let's go ahead and find some one shots to drag in. I'm using this Neon Pop 2 sample pack here in Splice. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Splice in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I just really like using them. Okay, I really like that snare. It's a nice, tight, but dry snare. I'm gonna download it, and then I'm just gonna drag it directly onto one of my sample pads here. And what you'll notice is that each of the sample pads have a name uh, for that instrument. So C1 is typically where your kick drum will go. D1 is where your snare drum will go. This is following the GM or general MIDI drum map. And what you can do is you can rename uh, these samples once you drag them in. So I'll call this snare main. And then what I'll do is load up another sample. So let's find a kick sample. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one. I'll go ahead and download that. And I'm just gonna drag this right here on C1. And it is a little tricky when you don't have a lot of screen space. There we go. So now I've got a kick. I'll name this kick main. And you can click right here on the uh, speaker icon to audition those sounds. Or you can use your MIDI controller.
Okay, let's find some hi-hats. I like that open hi-hat. Okay, so let's do like closed pedal hi-hat and then open hi-hat. So let's download all three of these. Now with hi-hats, these are typically going to be on F sharp one, G sharp one, and A sharp one. So A sharp one is gonna be your open hi-hat, G sharp is gonna be your pedal hat, and then F sharp is gonna be your closed hi-hat. So I'm gonna take this uh, closed trap hat, and this one's gonna go on F sharp one. I'm gonna take this saturated one, and this is gonna go on the pedal hi-hat. And then the open hi-hat is going to be this open hi-hat wide. And now I've got all three of those hi-hats. Cool. And then I can rename these. So I'll just call this hi-hat trap, hi-hat, um, I'll call it sat for saturation, and then hi-hat open. Now, one thing you can do here if you think about the way a real drummer would play a hi-hat, when you play an open hi-hat, immediately followed by a closed hi-hat. What's supposed to happen is the open hi-hat gets closed and gets choked by the closed hi-hat. What you can do is you can put all three of your hi-hats or whatever number of hi-hats you have in an exclusive group. And an exclusive group is essentially like a monophonic group that only lets one note play at a time. So what I like to do with my hi-hats is I'll put these in exclusive group one, just like so. And you just click on this little gear icon in the lower right corner of each pad and select one. And you'll see that one in the upper right corner. So now if I play an open hi-hat followed by a closed hi-hat, closed hi-hat will essentially choke the open hi-hats. So it's not like super obvious with these samples, but that is something I like to do. So you don't have these open hi-hats ringing out uh, on top of your other hi-hat samples. And you know what? I kind of like this disco hat more than the trap hat. So I'll go ahead and download that and I'll drag it right on top of my existing closed hat. I'll just call this hi-hat close. And it keeps all of the other settings. And you'll see if you click on Q sampler main or Q sampler detail, you can affect the uh, sound itself and you can see the sample. So if you want to shorten up the sample or set this, a different start point, you can do all of that here in the quick sampler editor. Or like, for example, my open hi-hat. If I want that to be a little higher pitch, I can either go to the pad controls and pull up the pitch, or I can go into the Q sampler detail and adjust the coarse and fine tuning here as well make that saturated hat a little higher as well. Let's make that uh, closed high hat a little higher too. Cool. Awesome. Now you can just continue on and you can build out the drum kit as big as you like. As you're building your drum kit, you're going to see the step sequencer in the background start building up and adding rows. So for each sample you drag in, what you're really doing is you're creating a new track inside the Drum Machine Designer track stack, which is really cool because that means you can sort of mix these all here independently. But what also happens is if you create a pattern region, each of those pads is gonna show up as a row here. And so you can program in your beats this way. One thing I like to do is I like to sort of add icons to each of these, just so they're a little easier to identify in the step sequencer. So if you right click, you can select assign track icon. So this is like a kick. All right, and then once you're done assigning track icons, you can colorize these as well, but you wanna do that down in the step sequencer. And you can go to view, you can show row colors, and then you can choose different colors. So maybe I want my kick to be this orange color, the snare to be yellow. I'll make all of the hi-hats the same color. So I try to like group the colors together a bit. I'll make the clap the same color as the snare. And I've actually got these out of order here. Let's put the kick up here. And then the toms, make these a little like a, like a bright pink color. And then the crash, make like a blue color. And so now what I can do is I can use this to build my own custom drum pattern.
And there we go. Now what I can do is I can mix these in the mixer just using the track stack function here. It's like the toms, for example, if I want the toms to be sort of panned out, I can do that. Just remember that if you want to adjust stereo pan as opposed to balance, you right click or control click and select stereo pan. So it's gonna give those a little bit of uh, a little bit of space there. Let's say I don't really like the clap sample. Let's go into Drum Machine Designer, select the clap. We can use the pad controls or the quick sample. Let's pitch that up a little bit, add a little bit of reverb to it. Now, all of these reverb controls are actually just controlling uh, this reverb that's built into the instrument. If you want, you can actually adjust that same thing here from the sends, uh, but you can also add your own reverb. So like, you know, if I want to use a third party reverb, I can totally do that. This is Valhalla Vintage Verb, and I'm going to pull up one of these gated reverbs. Let's make the hi-hats go to the delay a little bit. Let's make the main snare go to the reverb as well. Same with the toms. Let's add a filter to the hi-hats. And again, this is the beauty of Drum Machine Designer. You can mix it like a normal drum kit. Let's just pull out some of the bottom end. Now, the cool thing about this is if you want to recall this kit for later, like let's say this is a custom kit you're going to use on a whole album or multiple projects, and you just want to be able to easily recall it for later, including all of those effects and adjustments that I made. This is really simple to do. Open your library, select that track, and then go down to save, and then give this a name. So I'm going to call this Neon Pop Kit, and I'm going to go ahead and just delete that whole track. And I'll create a new uh, software instrument or pattern track, doesn't really matter. And then what I can do is I can, in the library, go to user patches, and here's that custom kit. And what this does is it'll load up not only your custom sounds, but also all of your levels, all of your uh, sends and effects, uh, your buses, your aux tracks. And if you create a new pattern region, you'll see that it keeps all of uh, the colored rows where they're supposed to be. Now, one thing you'll notice though, is it has put the rows out of order. If you wanna fix that, just make sure that the rows are in the same order up here in the tracks area. So you just open up your tracks, track stack here rather, and then you put them in the order you want. So maybe they want the clap up there, then hi-hats, then toms. If you go and you save this again, I'll just save it as neon pop kit again. It'll overwrite that. And replace it. So now when I reload that instrument, if I go to user patches, neon pop kit, they'll be in the correct order. And when I create a pattern region, you'll see that they're now in the correct order. Okay, so that is how you can create your own custom drum machine designer kit using the drag and drop sample feature. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.